Welcome to Math with Mr. J. In this video, I'm going to cover how to solve compound inequalities involving AND. We will go through two examples. Let's jump into number one, where we have x minus six is greater than or equal to zero and less than or equal to 11. In other words, x minus six has to be greater than or equal to zero and x minus six has to be less than or equal to 11. Now, when it comes to solving compound inequalities involving and, we have two ways we can do it. We can solve each inequality separately or at the same time. I'll go through both ways and you can use what works best for you. Let's start by separating this into the two inequalities that make up the compound inequality. This way helps us break everything down and helps us understand a little more. And it can help us stay a little more organized. So we have zero is less than or equal to x minus six and x minus six is less than or equal to 11. So those are the two inequalities that we need to solve. Let's start with zero is less than or equal to x minus six. Well, we need to isolate x. We have x minus six. So we need the inverse operation of subtraction. That's addition. So let's add six to the right side of the inequality. Whatever we do to one side, we must do to the other. So let's add six to the left side as well. Now the six is on the right, cancel each other out. X is now isolated, so we have X is greater than or equal to, and then on the left side, zero plus six gives us six. So we end up with six is less than or equal to X if we are reading this from left to right. Or we can also say x is greater than or equal to six. So thinking about it and reading it with the variable coming first. And we can even write it out that way if it helps. So x is greater than or equal to six. Now we need to solve x minus six is less than or equal to 11. Let's isolate x. So we need to add six to the left side. That means we need to add six to the right side as well. Now the six is on the left, cancel each other out. X is now isolated. So X is less than or equal to, and then on the right, 11 plus six gives us 17. So we have X is less than or equal to 17. And now we're done solving our two inequalities x has to be greater than or equal to six, and x has to be less than or equal to 17. Now we can combine these and write this compound inequality without the word and. So we have x is greater than or equal to six, and less than or equal to 17. So X has to be greater than or equal to six and X has to be less than or equal to 17. X has to be both. X has to satisfy both. Remember, a solution of a compound inequality involving and is any number that makes both inequalities true. It has to work for both. Now let's solve this a second way. And for this, let's rewrite it over here so we have X minus six is greater than or equal to zero and less than or equal to 11. Now here, we're going to solve both inequalities at the same time and solve from the compound inequality written like this. We're not going to separate it with the word and. So let's isolate the variable. We're subtracting six. So we need to undo that with the inverse operation, addition. Let's add six here in the middle. That means we need to add six over here on the left and add six over here on the right. Now the sixes in the middle cancel each other out. So X is now isolated. 
we have x is greater than or equal to, on the left, 0 plus 6 gives us 6, and then x is less than or equal to, and then on the right, we have 11 plus 6 is 17. So we end up with x is greater than or equal to 6, and less than or equal to 17. So we get the same thing here. And really, we solved it the same way. We just didn't separate it. Let's move on to number two. Now let's take a look at number two. And we're going to solve this one the same way we did number one. We're going to solve each inequality separately, then at the same time. So let's jump into number two here, where we have 3m plus 7 is greater than or equal to negative 2 and less than 13. Let's start by separating this into the two inequalities that make up the compound inequality and solving each of those. So we have negative 2 is less than or equal to 3m plus 7. And then we will solve 3m plus 7 is less than 13. Now, as far as negative 2 is less than or equal to 3m plus 7, we need to isolate m here. We have multiplication and addition. We need to undo the addition first using the inverse operation, subtraction. So let's subtract 7 from the right side. That means we need to subtract 7 from the left side as well. Now the 7s on the right cancel each other out. So we have 3m is greater than or equal to, and then on the left, negative 2 minus 7 gives us negative 9. So we have negative 9 is less than or equal to 3m. So we need to undo that multiplication by using the inverse operation, division. So divide the right side by 3. That means we need to divide the left side by 3 as well. Now the 3s on the right cancel each other out. m is now isolated. So we have m is greater than or equal to. And then on the left, negative 9 divided by 3 gives us negative 3. So we end up with negative 3 is less than or equal to m if we are reading this from left to right. Or we can also say that m is greater than or equal to negative 3. So thinking about it and reading it with the variable coming first. Now we need to solve 3m plus 7 is less than 13. So we need to undo that addition first by subtracting 7 from the left side. And then we need to subtract 7 from the right side as well. These 7s cancel each other out. So we have 3m is less than, and then on the right, 13 minus 7 gives us 6. So we have 3m is less than 6. We need to undo the multiplication using division. So divide the left by 3, and then the right by 3. The 3s on the left cancel each other out, so m is now isolated. m is less than, and then on the right, 6 divided by 3 is 2. So we end up with m is less than 2. So m has to be greater than or equal to negative 3, and m has to be less than 2. And now we can combine these and write this compound inequality without and. So we have m is greater than or equal to negative 3 and less than 2. So m has to be greater than or equal to negative 3 and m has to be less than 2. Now let's solve this the other way and we will solve them at the same time without separating the compound inequality. So let me rewrite it over here. So now we need to isolate that variable of m. Again, we have multiplication and addition here, so we need to undo the addition first. So let's subtract 7 from the middle. That means we need to subtract 7 from the left and the right as well. Now the sevens in the middle cancel each other out. So we just have 3m 
And then as far as the left, negative two minus seven gives us negative nine. And then on the right, 13 minus seven gives us six. So now we have 3m is greater than or equal to negative nine and less than six. So we need to undo that multiplication using the inverse operation, division. So divide by three here, and then we need to divide the left by three and the right by three. These threes cancel each other out. M is now isolated. On the left, negative nine divided by three gives us negative three. And then on the right, six divided by three gives us two. So we end up with M is greater than or equal to negative three and less than two. So we can see that we get the same thing that way as well. So there you have it. There's how to solve compound inequalities involving and. We can either solve each inequality separately or at the same time. Use what works best for you. I hope that helped. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, peace.